Hey, what's up, guys? What's that look like? That's right, it's another new scope. And we're back to my favorite brand, Handtech. This is the DSO 4102C digital storage oscilloscope with arbitrary function waveform generator built in. 100 megahertz uh, bandwidth, 1 giga sample per second. 25 megahertz, 200 mega samples per second on the arbitrary waveform generator. So that's pretty cool. Let's turn it on and see how quick it boots up. That's actually a hard switch. That's about three seconds, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10 seconds from completely off to a trace. Not too bad. Comes with a set of these uh, passive probes, PP150s. They are 100 megahertz, uh, 10x600 peak, 1x200 peak, Cat2 probes. And we'll put that over here on channel one. We have our compensation adjuster here. It is of course the one kilohertz square wave, five volts. We get her hooked up there and take a look. That's straight in. I haven't done any tweaking to it yet at all. And it's looking pretty square. Might be a slight amount of undershoot, but honestly I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. See, we're at 200 microseconds. Uh, volts per division, where's our seconds per division? Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Duh. So, down to 2 nanoseconds. And all the way up. Wow, 80 seconds. That's a that's a pretty good uh, sweep there, time-wise. That's that's impressive. Our vertical scale. So that's 100 volts down to 20 millivolts. That's pretty decent as well. Yeah. Oh no, it's looking pretty good. Of course it is a uh, dual channel, channel 1, channel 2. Math functions available, channel 1 plus 2, 1 minus, channel 2 minus channel 1, times, divide. Let's see what else. Hmm. Doesn't look like it has fast Fourier transform, but I'll have to look in the book to see if that is available. I'm not sure. It would be kind of disappointing if it isn't available. And we have our standard measurements. Real time, equal time. Uh, normal peak and average for our choir modes, memory depth, 4K, 20K, 40K. Now we have utility menu, cursor menu, time, voltage, and track. Nice little help menu. Those are always good if you don't know what's going on. We have an unlabeled F7 button which gives us a split screen for our cursor menu, save recall, display menu. Yeah. Very nice. Come over here and we look at the controls. You can see we have pretty much standard controls. We have a multi-function knob here that is clickable. 
Then we have our buttons, measure, acquire. You know what I'm talking about. I do find it to be a slightly odd placement of the horizontal scale up here. Instead of putting it down here, that's what I'm used to. Same with the trigger, but I understand they put them up here so they could put the function generator controls, which are quite sparse here. And if we look down here at the inputs, we have generator out, uh, sync trigger, channel 1, channel 2, and external trigger. And then we have our generator controls. So it came with an included... Uh, one meter BNC cable labeled high quality coaxial cable CNALS RG58U 50 ohm. Ooh, 50 ohm. If you're a radio guy, you know why I'm excited. That's 50 ohms. I can use that with something that you'll be seeing very soon. So we'll put our generator here into channel one change our view here a little bit and turn the generator on okay that's a little bit weird seems like perhaps there should be a menu there right ah there it is so for our generator we have sine, ramp, square, trape? What is a trape? Okay, DC, exponential, AM, FM, arbitrary one, two, three, four. Very nice. Uh, we have our frequency. We are at one kilohertz there. So that's 1,000 hertz. Adjust that with the V0, right? Oh, okay, I see. So, so we can go 25 megahertz. And if I turn that off right now. Okay. So adjust our trigger. Why does our trigger not like that? What am I missing? Burst type continuous, so there's no burst. Yeah. You would think, okay, I can't adjust the, when it's in scope mode, I can't adjust the speed. Let's try this here. 25 megahertz, let's go one megahertz. Put our trigger in here. Well, am I missing something here? Trigger menu. Edge. Channel 1. Slope. Auto. DCM. I can go AC coupling, but... Why is it not... Why the hell is this thing not triggering? Okay, I'm sure you guys are like all shouting out what I'm missing here. Let's go with the square wave. Okay, square wave. Hit the auto set here. That's doing okay. 
get back to a sine wave. So one megahertz is okay. Now let's go back in. Take our speed up, let's go. Ten megahertz. Just our horizontal scale. Yeah, I don't know why it was doing that. That was uh, just a little bit weird. Anyway, you can see we also have a USB to save our waveforms, uh, also an SD card slot, which is nice for not only saving our waveforms but also for uh, firmware updates. We've got uh, USB on the back. No Ethernet. Also no pass or fail. Now I'm not doing an in-depth review of this today. This is pretty much just a bit of an introduction. So, okay. What did I do? Knock the cable loose? Yeah. Very interesting. Now, if you remember yesterday's video, we had this emergency generator thingy. So I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll hook it up to the scope and see if we can't take a look at the waveform. All right, let's hook a couple wires up here, and we will do the the regulated side. Let's get our probe on here. see what we see. This may be a <laughs> somewhat interesting to hand crank this generator and set the oscilloscope. Okay, maybe I can do it. So I'm, <laughs> I'm cranking it here with one hand. Let's uh Let's go with our trigger menu, and let's AC couple it. And get out of there, go to channel one, which we will also AC couple. Let's see where we're at now. Okay. And we'll zoom way in here. See what there is to see. Yikes. Tell you what I'll try and do here is crank this with the one hand. Hit the auto set. And see if that does any good. Okay, let's go back to AC coupled. It's giving us a pretty smooth waveform. Zoom in here. All right, now we're starting to see a little something. Hey, what if I can get this to stay while I hit this button? Okay. Now, if we say measure, that's the, no, we don't want to measure. We want cursor, and we want voltage. Let's 
and then yeah, that one's good. Wow. So we're seeing a ripple of about 408 millivolts, it's looking like. Quite a spike on startup, too. So we're looking at almost a half of a volt. Almost a half of a volt of ripple. Which is not great. I mean, it'll work fine for charging your phone and stuff. I just prefer to see something a little bit smoother. <laughs> Let's see what happens when we put a load on it. Okay. Hooked up a little load. Put about an amp on it. And we'll crank her up and we'll see what happens. Oh, there. That is uh, considerably more than we were seeing before. Holy cow. That is something else. Let's see if we can adjust our... Oops. Wrong way. Okay. A little more adjustment. Oh, frankly, that's terrible. Let's see if I can hit the thing while it's moving. Okay. Close enough. We'll ignore this here at the end. And we'll go cursor. Voltage. You will even average it. That is unbelievably bad. Unless I'm missing something here. We're looking at a six volt ripple. All right, what if I turn the load down some? About a half an amp here. I'm turning it faster, the voltage is about the same. Let me zoom in a little more. And let's take one more look. So we're back at about in the 400 millivolt range for Ripple. Well, It'll put out power, but it ain't clean. It's uh, it's quite kind of ugly. And if you put a load on there up around an amp, it's just all over the place. So, not great. Not great. But I do like the oscilloscope so far. Like I said, this uh, today was not an in-depth review of it. This was just a quick first look. So uh, I'm gonna end this here before it gets too long. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching, sticking around, commenting. I love it when you comment. That's it. I'm out. Peace.